The notebooks you see here are all bridge tallies. This is a project that I completed at the request of one of my dear friends who plays two-table progressive bridge. They like to keep one tally static and then use note paper to keep their score. So these little notebooks are for each player at both tables to keep their score as they play Hands of Bridge. My name's Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mix Media. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. And of course, that notification bell lets you know when I have additional content. So let's get started. I went into PowerPoint, created a table or created a scorecard and sized it so it would fit on a playing card. So we are going to alter playing cards to create these little booklets. I found a deck that fits the table that I created in PowerPoint well. I created the individual scorecard for each table. So they represent table one, table two, table three, I'm sorry, player one, player two, player three, player four, and table one and table two. So I'm trying to line my cards up the same way, ace through eight to represent all eight players. I'm gluing two cards together to just sturdy them up a bit. I'm utilizing just a craft glue and I will make sure that I cover it from edge to edge and just glue two playing cards back to back. So once we get all that done, I want to put a little pressure on them to make sure that everything is in place and holds well. So I'm just going to stack them up and put a book on them and let them get completely dry. And I have this big book that I like to use for that. It's an old uh, Ethan Allen antique book. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but in any event, those have set under there overnight to dry. And now they are ready to start working. I am sanding because these have a plastic coat to them. So I want to sand that to allow it to accept my ink. Now, my friend did tell me that the individual she's going to give these to really enjoys her bird feeders and likes to watch the birds. So I have this old calendar from 2013 that I have hung on to these images. It's one of those old day-by-day -day calendars. And I'm pulling that out and choosing birds to put on each of these little booklets. And I'm just going to fussy cut around the bird. And we will create a background on which to utilize this bird as our focal point on each of these little bridge tally booklets. And I think that's going to work. And I can't believe I've hung on to this calendar since 2013. And here we are, 2021, making this video. So let's just fussy cut around a few. And I will do the rest of those off camera and get them ready. But I have chosen eight images, one for each booklet. I'm just positioning them to see how they'll work. So we have that done. And we're cutting them out to make sure they'll fit securely. And now let's get this ready to accept some paint. I'm gluing down book pages. Once again, as I said before, these cards have that plastic coat to them. I did scruff them up with the sandpaper. And now I'm going to utilize that to glue, to hold the glue, to glue down these book pages. I'm going to leave the number peeking out because I think it might be nice if you have a little hint that this is a playing card when you're using this as your bridge tally. So I've just 
glued book pages on to each of the playing cards and to give them a good coat of my glue and water mixture. I'll link how I mix that up above and allow that to dry. So there we have all eight completed. We have all of our birds cut out. But now let's just add some color onto the background. So I'm using this phthalo green and I'm mixing it with a little black just to deepen it up just a bit. And I have a old hotel key card that I'm going to utilize to just pull that ink over this book paper. And I like to do this because I think it gives it a lot of variables and interest on each individual one. It's not just covering with a paintbrush. It is scattering with a hotel key card or a credit card or any card that you have in your possession. And we'll coat all of this up and allow those to dry. Okay, and once dry, I'm going to come back and add a second color. And I've chosen a ochre, yellow ochre. And we'll just do the same thing. Lay a little paint down, grab it with that Hotoki card, and drag it across our altered playing card. And for the final color, I'm utilizing a violet. Now I know this looks kind of like a mess, but trust me, I want all of these colors to kind of peek out. I have looked over all of the birds and kind of determine what three colors would complement each of our birds. And I chose these three. Phthalo green, yellow ochre, and violet. And I went to just tone it down a little bit. So I'm applying a coffee filter on the top of each. And these are just coffee filters that I run a cup of coffee through in my little two cup pod. So they're smaller filters. And of course, you know how we save things. So I have a whole file folder full of dried coffee filters from previous brews. I'm going to lay that coffee filter down and then put my bird atop the coffee filter and give both a good coat of the glue and water mixture. And I'm speeding up the drying a little bit with my heat gun, but you could just set these aside and allow them to dry. And once, once dry, I've trimmed around the edges, and now I'm taking my Stabilo awl and outlining that bird. Just laying that down, then putting a little bit of moisture on my finger and smudging around his outline. And I will do that on each. And now for the true magic for this card, I am putting it inside an embossing folder, taking it over to my Big Shot embossing machine. And look at the texture that you get in this. And this is where I think these colors really come into play. You can see them in the ridges and the valleys of the texture that that embossing folder has created on this card. And it also meshes everything together, makes it kind of ding when you tap it on the table. It, it just really secures everything. So you need to ink around the outside edges with black. And then I'm coming back in with this gold and I'm looking all over. I can never find a name for this particular ink pad, but it is just a real light burnished type gold. And I'm going over all of those ridges with that to give each, to give that texture just that gold highlight. 
back around with the black to give it a good solid outline. And there pretty much completes the front of this of this little booklet. So now we need to get this together to put in our little bridge tally. So there's all a one for each player. I will be cutting just black cardstock to put on the back of this and to back this up. And here are the tallies that I printed on my copy or printer. And that's how that is going to lie. So let's take these to the embossing machine and just emboss them with the same texture that we embossed the front with. And that will give that some continuity when you open it up it will be the same texture and then we'll burnish that with the gold to just illustrate those highlights and we'll glue that onto the back and trim it up if i can get my ink unclogged I have a new miniature ink bottle. I really need to get it out. But I just can't give this one up. But I'm just going to cut the remainder of these. We'll get those trimmed up and ready to go. We'll glue this one down. I wanted to make sure that I had the player number matching the card number. That's why I went back and cut a different one to glue down here. So we have that texture. We have our tally or our scorecard ready to go. And we will do that on each. So there's a completed book. each little card that's going to create the front of these tallies for us. So now let's put together the back. So I have embossed the black cardstock to put on the back of each and let's glue that down front and back. So there we have all of those complete. Let's stick them in the embossing machine. And now we have all eight of the fronts completed. Let's just go through each one real quickly. I think those birds turned out nice. And you can see where I outlined each with the Stabilo to just kind of bring them out of that background. And then we have player one, two, three, four, just kind of progresses. They're in, I guess, progressive bridge, right? So those are all complete. And now I just want to add a little more interest on the tally pulled out my embossing pen and just drawn a fine line around the top and bottom, some mirror, mirror, gold, mirror gold embossing powder. And we'll just heat that up and see how that looks. I like that top and bottom, so I'm going to go around all four sides now. So I'm Putting the embossing ink on with my embossing pen. That's just a clear ink. Use the paintbrush to get any of the embossing powder. That's where we don't want it. And let's heat it up to activate it. 
And I think that highlights that tally nicely. We have now completed the front of that bridge tally. So let's take a look at where we are thus far. We have all eight players with a bridge tally that they can utilize on an altar playing card. So this is their static scorecard that will be on the inside of this altered playing card or on the back, I guess, of this altered playing card. So the front of that card is represented with the birds, just like this. This is the front, you flip that over and they have their scorecard, but they need some paper to keep their actual score on now. So we have this complete. Now we're gonna move forward and figure out how we're gonna get them a little piece of paper that they can keep score on when they're playing two table progressive bridge. So we have the other set of eight cards that we glued together. I'm putting the black front and back. I'm also going around and, and trimming my corners or rounding my corners on all of the fronts because I've decided that would probably be a good idea. So we'll round those corners and ink around the outside edge so that white of that card is not showing through. And this is what is going to create our little booklet. So we've embossed that black card stock after we had it glued to the card. We'll go back with that burnished gold and show those highlights on the card. And we'll ink around the outside edge to make sure that there is none of that card showing through. So now let's get a little pocket or a little tuck spot to put some little sheets of note paper. So I've cut that down to an appropriate size to create a little pocket and that will work nice right there. So to create some continuity let's find a stamp that we can stamp on there. Let's create our little thumb hole or our pull spot. Here is a nice little filigreed stamp We'll stick that in our little stamping, I don't know what these are called, but, you know, hold your stamp in place and, and um, makes it easy to put it in the same place every time. And we'll stamp that with embossing ink, cover it with some more of that mirror gold embossing powder, heat it to activate it. And there, our little pocket has a little bit of that gold on it, and I think it just kind of ties everything together. We'll glue that down. And there's our little pocket to hold our note paper. So I'm just gonna clamp that into, into place and allow that to dry. And now I'm gonna punch some holes because we are going to bind this with some gold fabric that I have in my stash. So I put three holes with my craft pick into the edge of this card and now I'm just going to glue a strip of this fabric down the edge and sew it in with this gold thread. Because I want to make sure this is going to be secure. Because these are going to be opened and closed quite a bit, I think. So let's make sure that, that we have that securely in place. I've knotted up that gold thread. I want that little knot to show on the inside. So I'm going to go through that first hole. I've punched three holes down the edge. Go through the first hole. Come back through the second And just sew back through the final. Now I'm going to leave a little string there. I'm going to just tie that off in a square knot, but I'm going to cut that kind of long because I think it might be nice to dangle something down the front. 
Not sure I'm going to do that at this point, but I want that option. So there. Now let's just sew the other, the back on. And I'm lining it up so I make sure that my holes are punched through in the correct position. And now we'll glue that down. And I'm using Fabri-Tac to do this fabric gluing on the altered playing card. Glue that down, allow that to dry, and then we'll come back and, and sew with the gold thread. And this dries pretty, pretty fast. And I want to make sure that my knot is on the inside. I may have just to put my knot on the outside on this one. I think I knotted on the outside on this one so that the strings come up in different positions. So you have that long piece of string, one on the outside and one on the inside. So let's tie that off in a square knot. And this one will trim. So there, the booklet is complete. And now we'll tie this little charm onto the outside. And I'm just tying the charm on with a, with a little square knot, nothing special. Yeah, that dangles on the outside. I think that added a little bit of interest. And now I just need to cut some note paper to stick down inside that. There we go. There's a little collection of scraps of note paper that they can pull out and keep their score on. I wanted this to be something that the recipient could refill. I didn't want to have a notepad, like a waterfall pad or a secured pad, because then once it was done, the entire booklet was irrelevant. So I tried to make it something that could be refillable just with a pair of scissors and a piece of paper. So now I want to make some tags for the tables and we'll tie these together in groups of four. So we'll stamp that with table one, stamp the other tag with table two, secure that onto some gold fabric and tie them all together. And then you have your completed project, which is this bridge tally that is static, opens up to reveal some note paper that the players can keep score on. And that finishes a bridge tally made out of playing cards. Thank you so much for joining me on this. This was a fun project. It was something I never would have thought of doing, but at the suggestion and request of my friend, we have completed Progressive Two Table Bridge Eight Tally Booklets. Thank you for joining me. I hope you will subscribe to my channel and I have a playlist for some other ideas up above.